first extension, Steph Curry, the aforementioned Steph Curry, one year, $62.6 million extension. This keeps him through Golden State through the 26-27 season. He is going to now be the fourth NBA player, along with LeBron, Paul George, and Durant, to spend $500 million in career earnings. He has two years left on the extension he signed in 2021, and this was a one-year extension only because he could only sign that deal because the NBA is over 38 rule. Wes, when you saw this news come through, came through on August 29th, what did you think of this extension for Steph, and what do you think about it for the Warriors? It sets the stage for Steph's final three-season act. So he had two more years left on the contract, like you already said. This adds another year on top of it. We've got now a three-year window, which represents the last window of the Steph Curry era in Golden State. That's what I think this is. It's going to take him through his age 39 season. He'll be 39 years old by the time this thing is done. He might retire at the end of that, right? There is no question that that he'll be 39 years old. There is no question that that is a possibility. He also told Marcus Thompson from The Athletic, who uh, knows Steph Curry as well as any reporter uh, in the area, that Mm -hmm. he believes that the Warriors can build another championship team within this three-year window. It is not a surprise that Steph Curry wants wants to try to win another championship. It would be his fifth championship. Uh, The historical significance of that is vast. Um, If Steph wins a, a fifth championship, he's a no brainer top eight guy of all time, right? And maybe a lot of people would already put him in that, but I think he'd be a no brainer top eight guy of all time. Um, but yeah, he wants to win. He told the, the told the media after they lost last year and didn't make the playoffs that all he wants to have is a chance to compete. And they tried and failed to get Paul George. Steph actively recruited Paul George. It didn't work. They tried and failed to get Larry Markinen, but they did add some talent to this team. Um, they're going to try to make it a little bit of a run for it this time. I don't think on paper you could look at the Warriors and say, yeah, for sure, this is a team that's up there with the best teams in the West when you look at the roster. But Steph is saying, look, it's not about this one year. We have kind of primed ourselves to be to have an opportunity to, to, to trade for the next Paul George or the next Larry Markin, whoever else we can get our hands on. We're in position to maybe make that move. And it sounds like he thinks that that can happen within this three-year window that he's given the Warriors because also – He's, it's a vote of confidence in signing this one-year extension, right? This is the max, like you already said, the max that he was allowed to extend. So it's a little bit of a, a vote of confidence in this front office. And I think if you're a Warriors fan, you got to feel great about that. I agree. I, I think the where I am skeptical that that three-year window is open, though, is just it's it's got to have a lot of things go right, I think is sort of the problem. Curry has to stay at a very high level for those three years. I'm not saying he can't do it, but just history and minutes and all that stuff does matter. Like at a certain point, it's like he will be a 37, 38 year old guy competing against Anthony Edwards and Victor Wembanyama and Luka Doncic and all these monsters out West who are just younger than him. That that's an advantage for those guys. And he has to stay healthy, right? I mean, they'll be up there in age and we're talking about a three year window, one freak injury. You could lose a whole season because of that and now your window is that much shorter 30 yeah. percent shorter and this is a guy who you know he played 74 games last year but the years before it was five games in 2019 20 63 64 56 he has not had the cleanest bill of health in the last couple of years last year a, a trend in the right direction but it's not as if he's been pristine health-wise the last couple of years a little nicks and and knocks here and there number two need Draymond Green to stay at a high level I think their pairing is going to be key to all this, and Draymond needs to age as well as he possibly can and and, and find himself this degree. Number three, to the point of why they wanted marketing and why they wanted Paul George, this roster does, I think, need to be retooled and evolved. This is a roster that is in need of improvement if they're going to be a title contender next year or the year after, whatever. I like the Buddy Hield signing. I you know Pajemski and Kuminga I think still have upside. Kyle Anderson was a good one year thing for them. I like Moody. I like Melton, but those are not guys that are at the highest echelon to be your your three. Andrew Wiggins we don't really know what he is anymore. I mean I, I think it's fair to not be confident he's ever going to hit that peak he did when they won the title a couple of years ago again, for various reasons. So like there's just work to do on this roster I think too West because. Curry is going to, like, Paul George would have been perfect in a lot of ways, age-wise, 
skill set wise would have been yeah. great. Marketing would have been great in his own way. A little bit younger, but uh, a really, I think, nice piece for them. They have to find a way to be the team that takes advantage of that next opportunity. I think that that's the that's the crux of this whole thing. Yeah, I want to be clear. I am very skeptical that they can win another championship during this Steph Curry window that they that he's given them. If the over under was at point five championships, I would go the under, right? I would too. And so, but that's not really the point. The point is that Steph thinks that they could do it, or he's at least giving them the chance to do it. The biggest question now for the Warriors is how do we build around Steph? Because every single defense is going to do what to the Warriors this season? They're going to throw the kitchen sink at Steph. And if that takes Steph out of the game, there's not going to be a viable option, right? Unless two things happen. Unless Jonathan Kaminga takes this huge leap that Warriors fans and the Warriors coaching staff has been hoping for him to take for the last couple of years, or if Brandon Podensky becomes the all-star that Joe Lacob claims that he can become right away. And I don't really see any of those things happening. I know that NBA Twitter really loves Jonathan Kaminga. I'm a little bit less uh, bullish on Kaminga as maybe consensus is, even though I still hold out some hope. I just don't know that Golden State is the right fit for him. I don't think anybody thinks Pods is going to be an all-star level guy this year. I think that's pa- unfair. Pa- Pods, I, I think Pods does. Pods and Joe Lake, uh, outside of Pods and Joe Lakeup, of course. But I, that that's this this is not the year for the Warriors, right? They have about twelve to twenty-four months to really figure this thing out. But the other thing here too is, if they don't figure it out by the summer of twenty twenty-six, Steph has a year under contract left uh, on this deal. He could ask for a trade, mm-hmm. right? This isn't just the Steph. This isn't just the Warriors window. This is the Steph Curry window, and he's basically giving them instead of one year to figure it out, maybe two years to figure it out, which is an eternity in the NBA as we know. So if the summer of twenty twenty six comes around and he's got one year left on this contract, he'll still be eligible for the extension. It'll still be the over thirty eight rule. It'll only be another year. He could always he could just keep doing this, but. Uh, he could also say, you know what? It's just not working out, guys. Thanks for trying. I feel a little bit differently two years from now than I did two years ago. I'm going to go try to do it somewhere else. And that opportunity is always out there. But it does at least feel now that Steph Curry plans on playing for another three seasons. Which I think he can still play it in and stay in the high level the next three years. I mean, he's coming off being the hero of Team USA. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if he's a lock for all NBA at the end of this year still. And that's in, he continues at high level. That would not shock me. I think we should almost expect that standard. Yep. Let me ask you this too, Wes. If you were to look at him and to compare him and LeBron again, both guys in their twilight coming towards the end, LeBron closer to the end. We kind of feel like this is one or two years max for LeBron at this point. Which of their situations do you feel like has a better chance of feeling like they were a real title contender? I'm not even saying pick the them that they could win a title. Okay, tell me yeah. why. Why the Lakers? Because you have a number two in Anthony Davis, and the Warriors mm. don't have anything close to it. And uh, we could talk about depth and spacing and coaching and all these things, but like there has never been a team like the, this Warriors team that has won a championship, right? Like Even Draymond Clay and Andrew Wiggins were very different players in 2022 than they are now. You could even argue Steph Curry is a different player, right? We saw a little bit of a decline in him last regular season, even though he played more games. Uh, yeah, I, I no doubt. Give me, the, give me the team with LeBron and Anthony Davis. Give me the team with the two All-NBA guys instead of the one All-NBA guy. I agree. I think I also just... It, it's anecdotal. And it's not like they've recruited, like they didn't get Clay, they didn't get PG this summer in, in something. I don't know if you saw Paul George's dad, the clip of him on Podcast B saying the Lakers like already spent their money and he because he thought the Lakers would come calling. And I'm like, okay. But I feel like the Lakers would have a better shot of going to get a third guy for them. Mm-hmm. I just feel like they might have urgency, the, the ownership wanted to ride by LeBron. I think that just feels like a genie bus thing versus a lake up thing. Who's but they've been very prudent in the Mike Dunley Dunleavy era. And it's LA. And I just at the end of the day, yeah. I will give LA just a like that advantage. The Warriors couldn't get Paul George this summer for whatever reason. Um they well you know, didn't get Mark. The Bay Area is having a problem yeah. right now. Like the San Francisco Giants can't get a free agent to sign over these last yeah. few years. Like there's, there's uh, a reputation that the Bay area has earned over these last few years 
that is chasing free agents away where it used to be a place where some, like somebody like Kevin Durant wanted to come yeah. and get sort of it was embedded the, in the, Silicon the, Valley and stuff yeah, like that. Get, That's not the case yeah, ex- anymore. Yeah, expand your entrepreneurship, expand your brand. Now it feels right. like, A, you can do that anywhere to some degree, and B... And this is like, this is not a yeah. political thing, but the 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 thing around San Francisco has not been great these last few years, right? Like they're not yeah. get they're not it's not the best reputation, and and I'm just telling you facts. Like the Giants can't sign anybody. The Warriors, like you just said, they've had a hard time getting these free agents that they used to be able to get. So look, I like I like their moves this summer. Fine, I think it sets them up for making a move in the future. I think they're a little bit deeper this year. They have Steve Kerr has some toys to play with that he didn't necessarily have this last season, but. Um, my question to you, Chris, is like, mm-hmm. all right, they've got a three-year window. They struck out on Paul George. They struck out on Larry Markkinen. What's the kind of player, and you don't even need to give me a name unless there's one that comes to mind that's specific, but like the kind of player that Steph needs next to him as a number two for them to maximize the Steph Curry championship window. Is it like a Paul George type, or is it more of a Larry Markkinen type? Is it a different kind of player? Do they need a big man? What are we looking at? I'll give you two names that immediately came to mind. Number one was Carl Anthony Towns, just because I think that's a theoretically available guy, even if the, the Wolves were great last year, but their salary situation just means maybe he's available. I could see a stretchy big man, even if the Draymond fit isn't great. I don't love him and Towns necessarily together on a couple different fronts, particularly defensively. I, I think it's it's just hard to navigate that, I think, with what Draymond, I think, is great at right now. I could see that one just being like we're going to go all in on offense. We have the stretch. I think I think Towns could do really well off a of Curry from an offensive standpoint. The other kind of name I think of is Durant, and just what if the Suns implode? And just one last, it's just like we got one last shot. Let's just get the the guy who knows who the organization knows, who Kerr knows, who we've won Man, with. Before. That would be like, and if they won a championship with Durant, wouldn't that just wouldn't be that? Wouldn't that be the championship that mattered the least for KD if we're doing that whole yeah. the KD's rings matter thing? Um, well, it might matter more to some degree because he like actually it would be like a Warriors team that wasn't like a juggernaut that he just slipped into. He would be carrying a lot of weight, yes. I think, on that team in this hypothetical scenario. So I, I like the idea of getting a wing in Golden State who can handle the ball because I just I look at Steph and his situation now and I'm like, is this just Damian Lillard in Portland a few years ago? where he had no outlet, he would just get trapped 30 feet from the basket, and there was nobody really out there to help him kind of score on offense after that happened. Like, do you trust Draymond? Draymond Green's good at that and then finding somebody on the short roll, and maybe it's Kaminga on the lob on the backside or whatever it is, but that can't be your whole offense. At the end of the day, you're going to need somebody to make something happen that's not Steph. And maybe Kaminga could turn into that player, but... Steph, like I said, like Steph's 36 years old. Like, you want to wait for Kaminga? That's been that's always been my problem with Kaminga and Golden State is I think he could be great. I don't think he'll ever be great enough in time to maximize Steph Curry's championship window. So if you could turn him into just a better version of him right now, I think that makes some sense. So Paul George, Kevin Durant, like whatever. Jimmy Butler, perhaps. If he were to move Butler, on from Miami yeah. next summer, that to me makes a ton of sense for Golden State, just doubling down on this whole window for both of those guys. Uh, I really was intrigued by the idea of LeBron when I guess yeah. the, the Joe Lacob called the, the Lakers and said, can we trade for LeBron? And then was immediately hung up on, but that's, there's a reason why they keep going after these kinds of guys. And it's because I think he, that that's sort of the ideal fit next to, next to Steph. And then there's other things that you want to fix with the roster. I don't think just getting a wing turns this team into the favorite in the Western conference, but that's a big start. I would also just whatever the the Wiggins package is. I, I don't you know his salaries would be useful in a big trade, but I just feel like you gotta that you gotta just jettison him in some way. Too. Yeah, isn't it, it? It's such a blight on him that we're talking about. Hey, couldn't they really use this big two way wing? And, and it's just maybe just no could co- become that or one, and we're just totally overlooking Andrew Wiggins as ever being that guy. But for a good reason, man. Like I don't I don't try, I don't expect him to be that guy. I don't think you can trust him to be the the version of him from a couple years ago again. It's just it feels like that is the story of his career that he's never quite put it all together in the way you would really want him to with the size and his and his ability to and he'll have his moments, but it's it's doing it's it not long consistent, stretches. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's a I like getting him was a coup for them in a way, and I think it just it's it's hit kind of its peak. Like, and I I also. 
how, what his value is on the on the market, I'm sure, is not particularly high at this point in time. No, it's not. Imagine. He's a negative asset, and this is a team that doesn't have that many assets to begin with. So you're really going to part with an asset to get rid of Andrew Wiggins, and now you have one less asset that you can use to go and try to trade for one of these All Star caliber guys to pair with Steph. It just doesn't work. So they're kind of just stuck with him unless he's part of that deal that gets that other asset. Or maybe there's a distressed asset out there that they'd be willing to take a chance on. But it's just the risk-reward profile right now. Like, everything is under a magnifying glass because you got three years, essentially, here to make it work. So if you make the wrong trade, you set yourself back at least one year, but probably more than that, and that could close the Steph Curry championship window. There's a lot of pressure on the Mike Dunleavy front office to make this work. I do. I'll add one last thing to this before we get on to our next guy. Okay. Wes, I wonder if there's like a, a one of the younger guys that gets squeezed in in their situation. You know, I, I Jalen Green's the kind of the name that comes to mind here, and I don't like love the Jalen Green Warriors fit because his style of play just doesn't really fit curveball. I don't think. No. But I wonder if there's a young guy that that's very good, but ha- isn't in the higher in the pecking order in one of these situations that they could be the team that rehabilitates that guy to some degree. Um, like Darius Garland is another name that comes to mind. Cleveland just, you know, I, I think we all kind of think at some point they're going to break something up there. Garland wouldn't, you know, be the guy I go for there. But Jared Allen, if if they shift Mobley to the five, would be That's a great name fit I've, for them. I've circled for the Warriors a lot. Like, if Cleveland was ever to break up the Mobley-Jared Allen front court, I would be doing whatever I can if I were the Warriors to go get Jared Allen. He's not really your number two, but I think he makes them – markedly better and gives them something that they really need which is just a true center with size and ball skills who could do stuff and put up 20 points and 11 rebounds take some pressure off of Draymond Green in that back line defensively I I don't think he again he's not that number two that you know you would normally associate with a championship winning team but I think the domino effect like the ripple effects of having somebody like Jared Allen on the Warriors roster would be enough that it would probably be worth whatever that price was and then maybe you can go and figure out that second scoring option down the road 